We present a case of an esophageal squamous cell carcinoma. The lesion is mainly flat and reddish in white light endoscopy. Narrow band imaging, that is NBI, shows a brownish area. For the magnifying endoscopy, we rotate an endoscope to put the tip close to the lesion. In this case, magnifying endoscopy with NBI reveals irregular, dilated and elongated intraepithelial papillary capillary loop, that is IPCL, indicating that the lesion is a superficial squamous cell carcinoma. After spraying iodine solution, we make marking around the unstained area using tip of dual knife by soft coagulation mode by an electrosurgical unit. We place dots about 5 mm outside the lesion. In esophageal ESD, we principally start procedures from its anal side. Injection and incision are sequentially made for each quarters of the circumference. We start injection from its anal side. For first injection, we use normal saline. After proper injection to submucosa is confirmed, we use double dilution of hyaluronic acid preparation and normal saline for additional injection because inappropriate injection of hyaluronic acid preparation to muscular layer or subserosa can disturb following procedures. After a submucosal fluid cushion is obtained by injection, we start incision of anal quarter of the circumference. Incision from its left, wall side is preferable with consideration of gravity because submerging the lesion into the collection of fluid can disturb endoscopic view. After incision by endocut 1 mode, we make deeper dissection for anal half of incision by swift coagulation mode to make following dissection easier. And then we make incisions in its oral side. At this point, we still keep a small uncut mucosa in the most oral side, which is a small mucosal connection between the lesion and oral mucosa. Tension due to this small connection makes it easy to dissect lateral sides of the lesion. At this step, we expand submucosa by transparent attachment at the tip of endoscope. We make dissection of lateral sides of the lesion as far as possible. Subsequently, we make final incision at its oral mucosa to detach flap of the lesion from oral mucosa and start dissection of submucosa beneath the lesion. After sufficient dissection of lateral sides, submucosa beneath the lesion remains only in a narrow shape. Using transparent attachment to make counter-traction, we make dissection from the edge to the other edge of the submucosa, rotating an endoscope along lumen of esophagus. During dissection, a small disc at the tip of dual knife is useful to hook the edge of the submucosa. In this step, we sometimes encounter visible vessels. Although bleeding complication is rare in esophagus, we treat visible vessels by hemostat forceps in advance because bleeding can disturb endoscopic view. Finally, we achieved an on-block resection of the lesion. The operation time was 60 minutes. This patient was discharged without any complications on day 6 after ESD.